In the endless black between the stars, where the sun's warmth no longer reaches and the silence has lasted for billions of years, two of humanity's oldest machines drift alone. For decades, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 have been our quiet emissaries to the unknown. Their ancient instruments still whispering home across distances so vast that a single message takes nearly a day to arrive. But recently those whispers changed. Signals began carrying anomalies, patterns that defied the rules of physics, objects moving in ways no natural body should, and an unsettling implication that we might not be the only ones navigating the deep. Voyager 1 caught it, and for a moment it seemed like an isolated mystery. But then Voyager 2, traveling a completely different path millions of miles away, detected the exact same phenomenon. That was the moment the fear became real. This wasn't an error and it wasn't random. Something was out there, something organized, something intentional. And both Voyagers had just confirmed its presence. It began, as so many deep space mysteries do, with what looked like nothing at all. A faint flicker buried in Voyager 1's stream of telemetry. At first, the team at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory dismissed it as background interference, the kind of static that cosmic rays and stray particles cause all the time. But when mission specialist Dr. Eliza Cara examined the anomaly closely, she noticed something that didn't fit the profile. This wasn't a random blip. It was a reflection, a subtle echo of light that appeared to move. And the movement was not chaotic. It curved, it accelerated. It stayed steady as if controlled by something unseen. Soon Voyager's plasma sensors confirmed what her eyes suggested. The object was altering its trajectory deliberately. To put it simply, this wasn't how space debris behaves. Systems analyst Carlo Romero likened it to spotting a drone in the middle of the ocean. Out of place, unnatural, and clearly with a purpose, the team began eliminating possibilities. Not a comet, no tail or sublimation, not an asteroid. The path was too perfect. Not dust, it was too coherent. One by one, the natural explanations fell away, leaving only the unsettling reality that something was guiding this object through the void. As investigators debated whether this anomaly might be a fluke, Voyager 2, traveling far from its twin's location, sent back data that froze the room. It had recorded nearly identical readings, magnetic fluctuations, plasma shifts, and a faint but structured pulse signature matching Voyager 1's anomaly. This cross-confirmation eliminated the last refuge of skepticism. It couldn't be a software glitch. It wasn't a hardware malfunction. Two spacecraft operating independently and separated by millions of miles had witnessed the same phenomenon. European Space Agency analyst M.K. Fontaine compared it to two lighthouses, catching the same flash of light from an unknown ship. NASA quietly escalated the situation to a level 3 alert, a classification reserved for events with no current scientific explanation. It was no longer just about an object. It was about an event, a coordinated movement in space that appeared to be unfolding across vast distances. The implication was clear. Whatever was happening out there was not random, and it was large enough to be detected from multiple vantage points at once. As telemetry poured in, patterns began to emerge. Patterns that made the anomaly infinitely more complex. There wasn't just one object. There were 305. Each one moved in perfect relation to the others, maintaining distances and trajectories as if bound by an invisible grid. In the natural order of space, small velocity differences cause objects to drift apart over time but these they stayed locked in formation. Scientists described it as a flock of birds or a school of fish, except these were metallic, silent and gliding through the vacuum of space with an elegance that defied all known mechanics. There were no heat signatures, no signs of decay and no erratic spins, just coordinated deliberate motion. Stranger still, the voyagers picked up rhythmic plasma pulses from the swarm, each pulse repeating in structured intervals, suggesting not just movement, but communication. Dr. Serena Patel from Caltech noted the precision in the patterns and compared them to a language measured, deliberate and far too ordered to be a product of chance. The next revelation pushed the discovery beyond even the wildest theories. Doppler shift data revealed that many of these objects were moving at speeds that should be impossible, not just for human technology, but for any known form of propulsion. There were no engine flares, no exhaust trails, nothing to suggest traditional thrust. Instead, they seemed to be manipulating the space around them, 
gliding as if riding invisible currents in the fabric of space-time. Some traveled faster than the escape velocity of the Milky Way itself, an achievement far beyond the reach of any propulsion system we have ever conceived. Theoretical physicist Elena Reyes described it not as flight, but as surfing, using the very medium of space as the propulsive force. This wasn't ion drive. It wasn't nuclear propulsion. It wasn't anything we could build. And yet there it was happening before our eyes, with two of our oldest space travelers as witnesses. At this stage, the fear wasn't just about what these objects were. It was about what they were capable of, and what it meant for humanity to suddenly know they existed. While NASA's deep space analysts worked to decipher the swarm's behavior, something curious began to unfold back on Earth. Amateur radio operators, hobbyists scattered across different continents, started reporting faint rhythmic static patterns, unlike any common source of interference. These weren't random bursts or background cosmic noise. The pulses had a structure, a subtle regularity, and they seemed to align almost perfectly with the hours when the voyagers were registering their most intense anomalies. At first it was dismissed as coincidence, but as more independent reports came in from setups built in garages and backyards using salvaged equipment, the alignment became too precise to ignore. Some operators captured faint harmonics buried within the noise, suggesting the signals were bouncing off something high in Earth's atmosphere, or even bleeding directly into our part of the electromagnetic spectrum from deep space. Intelligence agencies quietly took notice, not because they understood the phenomenon, but because it was becoming clear that if ordinary citizens could detect these patterns, so could other nations or entities with far more sophisticated listening tools. Faced with the growing list of anomalies, NASA and ESA convened a joint task force to dig through decades of archived mission data. The hope was simple, find a precedent. If something like this had been detected before, perhaps by Pioneer 10, Pioneer 11 or New Horizons, there might be a clue to what was unfolding now. Teams poured over ancient telemetry logs, magnetometer readings and plasma data stretching back to the 1980s, but every search came up empty. There were no records of similar formations, no matching pulse structures, no past encounters that even hinted at such precision and scale. This absence of history led to a chilling thought. Maybe the swarm had always been there, cloaked or dormant, only revealing itself when something specific like Voyager's unique analog systems triggered its presence. If so, then these objects hadn't just appeared. They had been waiting. And the question no one wanted to voice aloud was, waiting for what? As the swarm moved beyond Voyager 1's position, another mystery emerged. This time from Voyager itself, its attitude and articulation control system, a decades-old guidance subsystem, began rerouting data through channels that hadn't been active since the Reagan era. Engineers initially suspected a glitch, perhaps the natural degradation of an aging spacecraft, but the changes were too clean, too intentional. Voyager was reactivating dormant memory banks, bypassing standard protocols, and transmitting on pathways no one had programmed in decades. Even more unsettling, this behavior began immediately after one of the swarm's magnetic pulses washed over it. Could the signal have altered Voyager systems? Or had the spacecraft simply adapted, responding to something in the environment? Whatever the cause, the once passive observer now seemed to be different, still functional, still responding to commands, but acting in ways that suggested it had been modified, either by accident or by design. The deeper analysts probed into the plasma readings, the more a strange idea began to take shape. The swarm wasn't just traveling, it was communicating. The pulse patterns carried harmonic intervals eerily similar to those used in quantum entanglement experiments, the kind researchers on Earth employ to transfer information instantly across vast distances. It was as though the 305 objects were nodes in an immense invisible network, relaying data through the vacuum itself. And Voyager, old, slow, quiet, analog Voyager, was the perfect ear to catch the whispers. Its outdated systems lacked the digital noise of modern spacecraft, making it uniquely capable of detecting signals others might miss. Was it a coincidence that both Voyagers were in position to intercept this network at the same time? Or was it orchestrated? The possibility that these signals weren't meant for us at all and that we had simply stumbled into someone else's long-running conversation was unsettling enough. 
But another more disturbing thought began to circulate in hushed conversations. What if they knew we were listening and had already decided to respond?